Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of video reviews about board and card games. Here are your hosts, Tom Vassell and Sam Healy. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia, hi. I'm Sam Healy, welcome back. All right, so today, don't run away yet, okay? Today we're taking a look at Map Maker, the gerrymandering game. Now, this is a political game only in the basis that it's about gerrymandering. It's not about political parties, even though they did stick Democrats and Republicans in here for whatever reason, or donkeys and... Donkeys. And uh, elephants. elephants. But the game does not... Elephants. The game does not poke fun at any political party and or support any political party. It's about gerrymandering, which is the redrawing of districts to somehow get them people to vote for your side. And gerrymandering, whatever your political leanings are, most people agree that it's bad, and yet everyone still manages to do it. <laughs> yeah. I guess. So some kids put together a board game because huh. they want to educate people about it, which I thought was a pretty neat idea. And so I played it, wasn't expecting it to be really much of anything. I didn't know what to expect, you know, hey, gerrymandering, what kind of... But it's actually an area control style game. Here's how it plays. So here I have a four-player game of Map Maker, the gerrymandering game, set up for you. And uh, all of these tokens are randomly distributed uh, face down over the board, and then they're flipped face up to see where everybody's chips have fallen, so to speak. Uh, one person is determined to be the first player. They will be able to start by placing one uh, of these boundary uh, things. Uh, pieces on the board anywhere they would like. The second person will place two, third person will place three, and then from the fourth person and then continuing around for the rest of the game, each player will place four boundary tokens out on the board anywhere they would like, uh, uh, and that will continue until the entire board has been divided up into districts. Now, a district has to be uh, no smaller than four counties. Uh, if a district has more than four counties in it, that's fine, but it can't have less than four. Additionally, if a, a district has a divisible number of counties in it by four, then it's not considered done until uh, it has less than eight. When a condition is met where it has somewhere between four and seven counties in it, a district will be scored, which means that one of the player's tokens will be placed in that area, showing that they control. Now, the way that they control it is by having the highest number of votes within that district from the different counties. When you place boundaries out onto the board, you're going to be placing them on these uh, vertices, I guess you could say, uh, on the board. But you don't need to place them on the outside because those dark black borders are already there uh, denoting the edge of the board. So you don't place them out there. But you're going to uh, place them, for example, anywhere you would like to. The blue player is going right now. And uh, we're going to try to get this district on our own. So that's one, two, three, and four and that will actually close off this district right here with one, two, three, four, five, six counties. That's not divisible by four, so and it is not less than four, so we go ahead and put one of our uh, uh, markers, wooden meeples in there, denoting that we have won this uh, district. Now, the reason we have is because we have nine, 11 votes, and everybody else has less than that. On Green's turn, they have the opportunity to close off this district, and so they're gonna go ahead and try to do that because it does have at least four counties in it. So they're gonna go ahead and place uh, these guys right here. But what this does is it produces a uh, tie because green has seven, blue has seven votes in this, uh, and then red, of course, only has four, so they're out of it. But because there's a tie, whoever closed off that district gets to choose who gets it. So, of course, they're going to choose themselves uh, to go ahead and gain the, the control of that district. On Yellow's turn, they're going to decide to place their four boundaries right here like this. Now, what this does is it does close off a uh, district, so to speak, but that district has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine 
uh, counties in it, so it's not scored yet because it still could be divided into two smaller districts. And then the game would basically continue in that fashion until, as you see here, the entire board has been divided up into districts that have uh, more than four and less than eight uh, counties in them. Uh, and then we count to see how many uh, of the meeples have been placed out on the board. Whoever controls the most uh, districts is the winner. And that is basically how you play Mapmaker, the gerrymandering game. If this game did not have a political theme at all, I think it would still have been a really solid area control style game. How would it be any different? You're saying, well... He's agreeing with you. Yeah, I am. What I mean is the gerrymandering theme makes sense. You could have said sense. if this game wasn't about bees, it still would have been a good area control game. Like, yes, it would have. Because what theme? Well, no, but... No, no, what I mean is at the end of the day, when you're done and you, you show, you're like, hey, it's actually, it does show you how gerrymandering works. How I managed to cut off this part yeah. and do that to get the district. Yeah. I mean, you really are doing that over the course of the game. Yeah. I'm like, oh, it's, Z has his big guy here. I'm going to cut that guy off. You can control your one area there. I hope you enjoy it. Right. And I think that's neat. And this game really scales well, I yes. think. It's, yes. it's. I gotta say, this does not feel like a high school or college project at all. Oh, this is better than like 65% of the games on Kickstarter. I would argue that it's even a higher percentage because you're forgetting how much bad stuff's on Kickstarter. 68. <laughs> it's like better than 90% of the stuff on Kickstarter for me. 80, I'll give wow. you 80. The components are really well done. It's just a bunch of sticks yeah. and a bunch of wooden pieces. I personally would have just laid off the whole donkey elephant thing in general I would have made the blue crabs and the red scorpions you know what I mean I would it's have done that it's, it's this a beach game is this a school project yeah well uh, I mean I, think I don't so. want to speak without knowing so I'm not sure but it makes sense why it's done the way it's done if so, if this is and I'm assuming like a college kids right this isn't well like there are three siblings school. who put it together. How old are they? They might be in their 50s. That's not <laughs> no, very they're not. You know what I mean? Three siblings does not tell me a whole lot. That's true. Come on, fellas. you you got to detectify. Anyhow. Detectify. Anyhow, the game, the game itself, I think, is just really well produced. It's really simple. A lot of time in the games today, there's just too much thrown into it. 100%. This, this feels is like a, really straight. This feels like an old classic Reiner Knizia or Michael Schott kind of game yeah. where they give you this, like, Euro game, sure, because the amount of interest in what you should do is so much higher than the rules you had to learn. That's just not a design philosophy anymore. You know, this reminds me of a domain. Uh, or domain, the you're building Klaus little walls, game. yeah, and you're trying to control the different areas. Although, again, simpler than that, you are literally just cutting things up. Right now, negatively about the game, I think the you can cover figure is out, fantastic. I think you can figure out pretty. I like the cover. It's not. I think you can figure out maybe 75 percent of the way through. Like, oh, I'm gonna lose. Yes. <laughs> There's not a lot you could do at that a certain point. Yeah. Um, but there's, other than that initial distribution, there's no luck. Mm -hmm. True. I but would that have, initial distribution can be huge. Maybe, though, but even if you have a bunch of your stuff together, then it's up to you to separate it. Yeah, there's also, and I, guess. I think it plays even better with two players, because when you play with four, there's always a chance that me and Sam are like, hey, you want to take this <laughs> joker out of the equation? <laughs> sure. Let's do that. <laughs> That's part of the game, actually. I could see that as a as a bonus. Well, uh, in that particular situation, I think in any yes. situation, I think if the players are savvy about what's going on on the board and they see that's a problem, we need to split that. That's going to give you another layer to the to the interest in the game. Yeah. You know, um, except for the theme for me, this game is neat, and it reminds me of Through the Desert. Hey, that's my fish. All these games that are that look that have fairly simple rules, but there's a lot going on. And yes, they're basically abstract-ish. You know, mm -hmm. uh, this is how this feels to me. It, to it totally fits into that bucket. Yep. Well, I like the theme. I like politics when you take out the 
nastiness and all that stuff. I liked the idea of them, but once I played this, I was like, oh, the theme is kind of, it's all about the dividing into districts, area control. Oh, man, that's my jam. I really like that style of gameplay, and I agree with you. It feels like, had this came, unfortunately, because it came out in 2019 with 7,000 other games, it's going to, a lot of people are going to miss this. Had this come out in 2000, it would have been one of the top 10 of the year, hands down. Okay. And I still think it's good. You haven't said much about it. What are well, your thoughts? You guys are waxing eloquent. So, but anyway. Like no. a politician? You kind of, sort of. But uh, no, I I like, like Z's been saying, I like the simplicity of it. I like how simple it is and how easily it plays. You don't have to spend a whole lot of time explaining how to do it. You, uh, <laughs> the only thing that I don't like about it is, is how swingy that initial distribution could possibly be. The rule book says the random setup does not give any player a noticeable advantage. I highly disagree But this with is that. also from people who uh, made this game that might be lying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not convinced that I would need like a mathematician to like to like study different well, yeah, setups. I'm One of those siblings not that, is a mathematician. Friedman, Friedman Fries could run a computer program and figure it out. Is he a computer analyst or something? Friedman Fries, you mean? Yeah, he wrote a computer program when he did 504 to run through simulations of the he game. He did? Yes. Ooh. Dude's crazy and it's smart. And still, <laughs> I'm gonna stop. <laughs> stop. Okay, well, anyway. You know where that was going. I for did. me, I do. congratulations to the siblings uh, who made this. I think it's a fantastic job. If I was still teaching history, this would definitely be one I would use in my class because yeah, that's gerrymandering great. is something that a lot of people don't understand. This actually makes it understandable because you can show it. I also think it's just a really solid game for two people. Oof. I mean, you can play it solitaire too, but for two people, it feels like it's really right there. I can get this up and running. I could teach it really fast. And it plays, it says 30, 45 minutes. It's definitely going to lean towards the 30 minutes. So a, a flag and a half up for me on this one, Map Maker. I, I thought it was really good. Oof. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, as, as, like you said, as a, something to bring into a class and teach 100%. As a, a study of what it's explaining, 100%. As a game for me to go out and buy and put on my shelf and bring out, somewhere in the middle. I'm not going to say flat out no, but this probably won't come, wouldn't come off a shelf for me. I don't like the political theme. The game does look bland. And while there is an interesting core there, I would have personally, if I did not know about this and I saw the same game with a neat theme, great artwork, I would be really engaged in that game. I like the artwork. I don't know what you're... It's artwork. I'm allowed to not like it. Objectively, it's good. End of discussion. Oh, well, then... Oh, well, there you then go. Then, in that case, one... <laughs> uh, turtle. Oh. Oh. <laughs> turtle? Well, yeah, I don't want to pick donkeys or heffalum, so turtle. <laughs> All right, Sam. <laughs> the green states. I'm probably somewhere in between these two. Half a I turtle. I did enjoy it a lot. Um, probably not as much as Tom did because I'm not yeah, he's, really. He's loving it. Uh, yeah. No, I really like I'm it. I'm not really uh, up on the whole gerrymandering thing. It doesn't excite me or interest me really hardly what? at all. What? Um, so the theme is is really kind of a nil for me, but the gameplay is fun. Uh, so I will still give it one elephant trunk up uh, so that it is a good game that's what I'm saying and I do enjoy it but it could have had a much more exciting theme wrapped around Don't it. listen to him. That's, there you go. There needs to be more games that educational and no, good. No, yeah, I yeah, like yeah. the educational I'll games. I'll give you that which is why I said again as an educational tool great. Right, yeah, absolutely. Truly well done. I just don't necessarily, you know, for me, no. Not I get it. And I also think a lot of people will see this and go, oh, politics, <laughs> and run the other way. That's probably going to happen, too. Sure. Right. All righty, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Sam Healy. See you on the flip side, folks. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. 
Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.